Oh, I didn't misspeak, and I'm not clickbaiting you with this title. This is something I actually believe about myself. And you're probably thinking, some of you guys are probably punching the air right now. It's like, how dare this guy? What a big ego. Probably not even true. This doesn't even seem that smart. Well, I'm going to make the case in this video that I am a genius. And I'm also going to make the case that you might be one too. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, dude, the whole point of a genius is that they're rare, right? Like, how could I be a genius? How could you be a genius? You're just some dude on the internet and I'm just some view I'm just some viewer. Like, how is this even possible? Like, what what are you even talking about? Well, I'm gonna break this down in this video. So first I'm going to start off with a quote by uh Arthur Schopenhauer, who is a big inspiration and a mentor of Nietzsche's, he said that talent is being able to hit a target that nobody else can hit. And genius is being able to hit a target nobody else can see. So what does that even mean? <laughs> so automatically, when we think of genius, we think of IQ, we think of just how smart somebody is. Now, for me, I was always a pretty smart kid, not going to lie. Um, I went to a high school of over a 1000 kids per graduating class, I was in like the top 50. But if you do the math on that, um, what does that put me at like the top 5% or whatever, I definitely wasn't the top 10, not, not the top 20. Um, and if we go across the entire globe, or the entire population, let's say I'm in the top 5% of IQ, that means there's still 10s of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions of people who are technically smarter than me. All right. And so what makes me a genius and not them? I think it's very simple. And there's a lot more geniuses in your life than you think, right? So what is it that people what is it that allows people to see targets that other people cannot see? It's probably not their intelligence. All right. That might be a, a small factor to that, or might even be a pretty significant factor. But I think it's one of those things where it's not like the 170 IQ guy can just see stuff that a, I don't know, 130 or 120 IQ guy can't see. Both people are objectively very, you know, intelligent people, right? Assuming IQ is a good proxy for how intelligent you actually are, which well, just for the sake of what we're talking about here, let's assume that. So what is it then? I think what it comes down to, especially when it comes to looking at the human condition and coming up with truths that seem like mind blowing or seem like, oh my God, I, how did this guy think of this thing? It comes down to your ability to look into the abyss. It comes down to your ability to really be radically honest about yourself, not let your ego take over and truly look at yourself and your behaviors and your thoughts for how they actually are, how perverse they are, how weird they are, and not shy away. As human beings, we are we gravitate a lot towards stories, right and narratives. And one of the narratives that we always um, that sort of blinds us or is kind of like, I don't want to say blinds us, but they're almost like these corrective lenses that we view the world through is our idea, whoops, our, our idea of who we believe ourselves to be. And typically, we want to paint ourselves as the hero in some way, even if we live very mundane, sort of uninteresting lives, we always can't help but think that we're the main character. If you look at internet memes of like, oh, everyone around me is an NPC, here's proof that other people are NPCs. And, you know, I'm the main character. That's sort of that that's kind of solipsistic worldview It's natural to have. Because if you don't think that you're the main character of your story, then you're not going to take care of yourself, you're not going to care about dangers and whatnot. And you'll probably die, <laughs> probably receive a Darwin Award or something. Um, so it's important, there's a practical utility to having that sort of um, mindset, right, of having that self preservative instinct or having that idea that I am the main character. And because of that, whenever you have thoughts, or things happen to you that conflict with that, most people just completely tune it out. That's actually the human superpower isn't necessarily our intelligence, although that's part of it compared to other animals. It's our ability to sort of selectively choose what information we consciously uh, 
think about or are aware about and tune out everything else. Other animals can do this too, but we actually are able to do that through the perspective of our values. Um, and that includes the narrative and the story that we tell ourselves. And so many people want to hold on to that so much of these ideas that have been implanted in their mind from a young age of like, hey, be a good person. Don't be a bad person. Don't be annoying. That whenever something happens that conflicts with that self-image that you have, most people just completely, they, they throw it away, they bury it, all right? Um, sometimes you might be successful in just completely throwing that out and not having it affect your psyche at all. That's how good humans are at being selective with this type of stuff. But a lot of times what happens is, is you know that you are actually deep down, you know that you are actually um, lying to yourself about these things and then you repress it deep down into your unconscious. This is kind of the basis of the idea of Carl Jung's shadow, that the parts that we don't want to associate with our ego, uh, we then repress which is the superficial idea of who we believe ourselves to be, we then repress into the unconscious, into the shadow. And then these desires, there which are very human desires that we feel ashamed of, then get projected out onto other people. So the things that we don't like about ourselves, we start to not, uh, we start to look at other people and be like, we don't like that person, right? Because all you're doing is you're projecting your shadow onto that person. And so where am I going with this? <laughs> So like, why am I a genius and why potentially are you a genius too? I think not everybody can be a genius, but genius is sort of a choice because what that really is, is, is again, what you're really doing is you're just setting yourself apart from other people and inside of a specific domain. So there's like creative geniuses, there's financial geniuses, there's just, you know, I don't want to call them intelligence, but like math geniuses scientific geniuses, right? And typically what you see with these people is, yes, they're very intelligent, sure, but they also tend to be extremely daring and they take risks, right? And so what's the difference between them and an intelligent person who buries everything into their shadow? It's that these people are willing to look into the abyss, look into the void, look into the deep, dark aspects of themselves and try to find something within that that actually reveals the truth, especially the truth about like what domain they're actually in. It requires courage if I'm trying to put it in the most succinct way possible. And the thing is, is that I know this is kind of a stereotype, but I think this is true. Most people who are like really intelligent, um, and I know people like this who I, I know, look, again, genius doesn't equal intelligence in my opinion. Um, there's, I, I know a lot of people who are more intelligent than me, just like you just look at their SAT scores or whatever, which is like a proxy IQ test and they got way higher than I did. Right. So, so like probably more intelligent than me, but they're not geniuses. And why are they not a genius? Because they can't create something new. They can't create values. They can't offer a new perspective because they, these people tend to overthink, they have analysis paralysis. And so if you're one of those few people who are like, you're a pretty smart guy. And I think if you watch this channel, you're probably already there. You're probably already within that domain. If these topics interest you, you're probably already a fairly intelligent dude. Really, the difference that the, the thing that you need to do that will make you into a genius is overcoming that fear, taking that leap, not having that analysis paralysis. I think especially for really intelligent guys, the analysis paralysis thing, overthinking, that's almost sort of like nature's test to um, see if you're worthy or not of being given the gift of intelligence, which is genetic, by the way. Um, IQ is genetic. Like a lot of times you can look and see like your parents or somebody in your family, if you're, if you're really smart, probably is really smart too, intelligence wise. Um, so yeah, like in, in my family, I have uh, somebody who is an Ivy Leaguer or used to be an Ivy Leaguer. <laughs> so there's something there. But again, that's just an intelligence aspect to it, right? That's like, you, you can't really change or choose that IQ. And like I said, it's a range. It's more like a cutoff point of like, okay, in order for you to have these deep insights 
or to be able to have the ability to see what people, other people can't see, it's a mix of having a certain level of IQ, which isn't as high as you think, probably maybe like one to two standard deviations above the norm, which is like, you know, college level or maybe, um, I don't know, master's level or whatever. You don't need to have to be like a PhD or whatever. Not necessarily having those things, just having the ability to achieve that. And then, a, and then you combine that with having courage and being daring. And when you combine those two things, again, a lot of people have this, not, that, not many people have this. Far more people have an IQ over 130 than there are people who are courageous enough to actually stare into the abyss, observe what they find there, and then try to integrate it in, in, into their lives and then speak that truth out. All right. There's far more people. Uh, far less people, I should say, on this side. All right. So if you're able to combine those two things in any given domain that you're in, that's where genius is. And it's easier said than done because when you're scared, <laughs> our automatic instinct, our fight or flight response comes up, right? Our automatic instinct is to just run for the hills. But if you're one of those few people that stands there and fight, even if it's just a psychological fight with yourself, then that's where the truth can be found. That's where genius can be found. This is one of the reasons that I'm such a big admirer of Nietzsche. Um, now, IQ wise, he freaking mogs me. I think he probably mogs all of you too. So this is why he was like a giga genius, right? Because he had that, he had the IQ aspect to him, sure. But also when you read him, he is, it's almost relieving to see how not just introspective he is, but how honest he is about his shortcomings. He even says to like, beware of himself. <laughs> uh, he talks about how philosophy is all basically just a philosopher's, con uh, the psychological confession of the philosopher, including himself. And he's even critiques himself all the time within his own work, uh, along with other people. And I think that that's extremely refreshing. And he talks about things that sounds so ugly on the surface, but if you really are honest with yourself and you really do a deep dive into who you are, especially as a man, you're just like, yep, that's true. I'm talking more specifically about the stuff about violence and power, right? And so that's what makes him a genius because there probably are and still are, there probably were and still are people who have just as high of an IQ as Nietzsche did, but you never hear about them and they weren't nearly the level of genius that he was because they weren't willing to go into the abyss. They weren't willing to go there. It's almost like if you're given, if having a high IQ or high intelligence is like given all of these tools to help observe the void that everybody's afraid of, and then you never go in there, right? So it's like, it's better to have the lack of tools go in there, discover some things. That person's more of a genius than somebody who never goes in there in the first place, even though they have all the tools to observe those things. With Nietzsche, he had both, right? And that's why he's, uh, as Jordan Peterson called him, he was a one in a billion type of thinker. Those people are very rare. Now, do you need to be, am I the level of genius that Nietzsche is? No. <laughs> I, I think that's fine. That's a high measuring stick to, to put yourself up against. But... And I talked about this in earlier videos about how it's important to have pride, right? That self-deprecation is stupid and it brings people down. And it's a way, it's actually a manipulative technique to try to make people think that you're not dangerous, right? And so I think this is the case too. If you're honest with yourself and you look at your life and say, yeah, I'm a smart guy, but also I'm a guy who has taken a lot of risks and I'm very daring and I do daring things that most people aren't willing to do. And because of that, I'm able to come to these insights that most people don't have. I think that's fine to call yourself a genius. It doesn't make you an egomaniac or whatever. In fact, like it takes a lot of courage to say that because you understand that there's going to be backlash to it, that people are going to be like, oh, what do you think? You're better than me? What do you think? You're better than everybody else? Like they're going to think that you suck. So it takes courage to say that if that's something you truly believe about yourself, especially if you think that you earned it. You know, and I, I really do think, I mean, these are the types of people that Nietzsche wrote for, what he called the, the higher men, people who are, you know, willing to, to look beyond good and evil, right? And I think it's okay to call yourself that if it's actually true, if you truly believe it deep down.
And it doesn't have to be from the standpoint of like, I am this way because everybody else is stupid. No, it comes from, because that's just a reactive way of thinking. It comes from more of the standpoint of, I have these gifts that are given to me, whatever, and I'm fully utilizing these gifts. There might be some people who are even more gifted than me, but they're not utilizing them and they're not, they're not willing to go to where they need to go to actually use these gifts that you're given to their fullest ability. That's where genius lies. If you have the courage, if you're willing to go there and look at the people that, if you don't believe me, look at people historically who are considered geniuses. At some point, almost all of them had to take some leap of faith or some great daring risk that catapulted them into fame or notoriety for being a genius. That's the thing that sets it apart. Courage is much more rare than intelligence. And that's something that's in your control. Well, I've been talking for a bit. I actually have to, what time is it? Yeah, I have to hop on a coaching call soon. Um, really hope that you found value from this video and you don't take away that like Kevin is just an egomaniac, megalomaniacal a-hole. And I hope this inspires you to take pride in yourself and to to have courage in looking at the things that most people don't have courage to look at. And because of that, and taking action on it, and because of that, you excel in whatever field that you're in. I really hope that that message came across because that's my intention. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.